What's up? On number 26, I'm here to give you my Pro Wrestling Noah Genesis in Germany review. Uh, this show took place May 15th, 2011. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Pro Wrestling Noah had a weekend, um, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of May, where they did a European tour. Um, the first two shows were in uh, the UK, the ones that AMCN won and Daniel Talks Pro Wrestling went to, where you saw the review starting on, their, on uh, Daniel's channel. And then uh, the last show on the 15th took place in Germany and was under the... Uh, was uh, got help a lot of help from uh, WXW. Um, so I bought this off of actually the WXW website, and I had to pay international shipping, but whatever. And then it's actually on Smart Market Video now, so I'll place, post a link to where you can get this DVD. Because honestly, this is a show of the year candidate, and I'm not just saying it because you would buy it. But you know, honestly, I had so much fun watching this show. There are so many great matches on the show. I mean, there are one, two, three, four, five matches that are very good to amazing. I mean, this show was so easy to sit through, you know. And especially if you're a big fan of Ring of Honor and want to see a lot of the updates on Japanese talent. If you don't usually watch uh, Japanese wrestling, this would be the perfect DVD for you to pick up. Um, because, it, you know, it's, it shows how Kenta has grown, how, uh, you know, and some of the best Ring of Honor guys face them, like in the double main event of Hiro and Kenta and Sugira and Castagnoli. But let's get into it. First, we have uh, the opener of Axeman. This is the first time I've ever seen Axeman versus Satoshi Kajiwara. Uh, who's one of the Kensuke office guys? Who's he? He's he's all right. I mean, he's he's definitely not on the level. He's nowhere near Nakajima, but uh, he 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 is a little green. But I, I thought he looked pretty good here. This is a, this is a very very fun opener. Didn't go all that long. Just let, let both guys go out there and show what they can do. Uh, nothing besides that really. But it was just a solidly good opener. You know, fun to watch and uh, easy to sit through. Three stars. Then I got to a match I was actually really looking forward to, Zack Sabre Jr. and versus uh, Taishi Ishimori. Um, Ishi, I, I, or, or sorry, Zack Sabre Jr. had three matches on this weekend against Nakajima, Kenta, and uh, Ishimori. Now, Ishimori is probably the least talented of those people, or, or probably the least fit to test Zack Sabre Jr.'s skills against how he would do against a Noah Jr. And I gotta say, if this is how well Ishimori, uh, he did against Ishimori, I can't wait to see those other two matches, because... This match did not go that long either, but this was insane. This this match was just it flowed at, at just an amazing flow to it, you know, just the psychology and the move sets and just everything just straight worked. And I mean, I I believe Zack Sabre Jr. got a tour for Noah out of this, and I'm like, he was damn impressive in this match, and so was Ishimori. I mean, these two had really good chemistry together, and I I really really want to see how Sabre Jr. would do in Noah since you know he he had such a great and entertaining match right here. I mean, this really really was so much fun to sit through, you know, it was, the, this was the definition of a fun juniors match to sit through, you know, hard, uh, a little bit hard hitting, you know, it, it was just an, a sight to see, honestly, I mean, this made me really happy to see this match, uh, this is the fourth best match of the night, uh, and, and that's how happy it made me, so, uh, three and three quarter stars. Then we got to a match, which I was kind of skeptical about, uh, the WXW Unified Championship, Big Van Valter versus Shuhei Taniguchi, um, I last reviewed, uh, the WXW show's where Daisuke Sakamoto was the champion. Since then, Big Van Valter has won the belt off of him, and now he is the defending champion. Um, and he faces Shuhei Taniguchi here. Originally, Valter comes out with Adam Polak, and Polak makes it a title match. So I really didn't get why that happened, but I, I don't understand. Uh, he spoke English, but it was kind of broken, and it, it was it was decent. But I, I kind of understood that the, the, he wants Big Van Valter to kind of prove himself, even though he's a heel. and It, it, it worked, but it was just a little weird to see. So then he faced Taniguchi, who they're trying to elevate, but I still don't think is there yet. He He's all right, but I, I think he needs a couple more years of conditioning before he can put him up there in as, as a, as a uh, player in the heavyweight division. Um, but uh, this is still a pretty good—this uh, actually was a good match still. Um, Valter used his size and his strength, and then Sh Shuhei Taniguchi used his, I guess, underdog mentality to uh, combat that, and that led to a great story in this match. And, you know, it really did lead to me to believe that Taniguchi could— you know, there were a couple of good near falls in the match where I believe Taniguchi could take the belt off of uh, Valtteri. You know, I mean, uh, in all re reality, it wouldn't happen, but it, it made me believe that, and that's good. So, three stars, very entertaining match. Then we got to the worst match of the night, which isn't saying much because this match was still very entertaining. The WXW Tag Team Champions of Adam Pollock and Karsten Beck teaming with Tommy End to take on Emil Satoshi, Johnny Moss, and Two-Face. There are a lot of good people in this match. I mean, this is my first time seeing Two-Face, but I've seen everyone else before. 
Uh, Tommy End had that match against Brian Danielson, which got a little bit of acclaim last year from the Ambition shows. Emil Satoshi is very impressive. Johnny Moss is a great brawler. And then Karsten Beck. I'm not the biggest fan of Karsten Beck or Adam Pollock, but you know they're good for what they are. And this match kind of proved that. Uh, still a very entertaining match. Um, a little bit of uh, weirdness going on with just with how Karsten Beck and Adam Pollock work. Um, but besides that, I, I did have fun watching this match, but it was the bit worst match of the night, two and three quarter stars. Then we got four matches back to back to back to back that were just so, I mean, they get, and they got time and they were just interesting and just a combination of a lot of things. Uh, the first one is Ricky Marvin versus Katsuhika Nakajima. Man is Nakajima just, holy crap is this guy. I mean, he was, uh, let me say this uh, instead of rambling. In 2009, a lot of people saw, okay, he's on the cusp of, he had that five-star match with Kenta and uh, lots of other great matches. And he's on the cusp of becoming just like this total package, and just this guy who can just, you really could ride on and really could become a huge player in the junior heavyweight division and really lead the Noah Juniors into the future. And he has it now. You know, he just straight has the look. He has everything, you know. He's, he, he is still a part of Kensuke office, but in his matches, he's like, okay, he he's his own guy now. He's not just in Kensuke's uh footsteps and you know it's so great to see because I mean he still has probably the best kicks in the, in the business I mean this is not his best match this year I mean you still need to see his match with Kotaro Suzuki which is awesome uh, but it was better than this match however just these two really really have great chemistry together you know Marvin has the lucha rest style which where he combines his luchador tactics with the Japanese uh, style and it, it really just works and it's so entertaining to watch and you know, these two just really went out there and had your basic great junior heavyweight match, and it was awesome to see four stars. Such a just a solid brutal match, uh, and I really really liked. I actually really dug the finish. I really really liked it. Uh, four stars. Then I got to one of the more interesting matches that I've seen in a long time. Uh, Bad Bones versus Go Shiozaki. This reminded me of if Evolve brought in uh, an international wrestlers who would work in their company. And then said, okay, go out there and wrestle a slow-paced match for 22 minutes. And this is what we got. Um, honestly, uh, Bad Bones does wrestle a little bit more of that brawling style. Shizaki combated that with his own brawling style. And it kind of worked on like that for 22 minutes. You know, it wasn't balls to the wall at all. You know, they just kind of picked it up at, at the last couple minutes. But besides that, it was, it was like a 15-minute feel-out period. And, you know, it just, it, it worked. You know, I had a lot of fun watching it, you know, um... It wasn't the big spot fest you would expect or anything like that, but, you know, it was still a fun match. And, you know, it, they deserve a lot of credit for having something different, a different type of pace on this show. And I really, really liked that. Uh, three and three-quarter stars. Then we get to the match of the night, and this match will be making my top ten. Chris Hero versus Kenta. Now, for those of you who are skeptical about, you know, Chris Hero... I, for certain reasons, uh, and this is his second match on a second straight company that isn't Ring of Honor that I've seen, that I'm giving him a four-star match with a Japanese wrestler. For the simple reason that it's, it's kind of two of the same. Um, you know, just take out Sekimoto and everything Sekimoto does and insert Kenta. And Chris Hero kind of wrestled the exact same match here. Just, just The only difference was he was combating Kenta as opposed to combating Sekimoto. And it was just, both, both those matches had about like a 10 to 15 minute you know, technical mat based war and then it took then and then they just had that period where they uh, crescendoed into like crescendoed for about five minutes into like, you know, the last the last se segment which was just balls to the wall action of their move sets and just no selling and just the great I mean King's Road is extinct. However, this this reminded me of that a little bit, um, just of how they can just work off of each other and just really just have their styles mesh and just how they can innovate their own offense against each other and just how that works. I just really loved, loved this match. This was an absolute war. I can't recommend this match enough. I don't know what number this is. It's going to be in my top 10, but uh, if you're hearing this, uh, it's my top 10 has already been updated, so you can go check that out uh, once you're done watching this video. So uh, four and a half stars. Worth the price of this DVD alone. Uh, definitely go pick it up if, if you have no other reason to other than this is an amazing show. And then we get to the main event, um, GHC Heavyweight Championship, Takashi Sugera versus Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, this match, um, I was really looking forward to. This is actually the selling point on the DVD for me, because uh, Claudio was my wrestler of the year la last year, and Sugera had improved so much. And let me say this before I get on with the rest of the match. 
Sugiren needs to drop the belt. I'm sorry. Um, and, and that's why this match is, does not have a higher rating. I felt like I was watching an, a, a basic Sugiren match. Like, I had already seen this match before, you know? This had elements of his where he won the title with Shiyazaki, which which was original back then. And then his match with Shiyazaki last uh, September, I felt Morishima was involved. You know, I'd seen this match with Morishima, even though that was a little different. Just specs and parts, his match with Takayama, you know, just specs and parts of his other title defenses were kind of in this match, and I was like, eh, it's starting to get old. I mean, I still love Sugero, but, you know, I, th I think it's time for him to drop the belt. And honestly, I don't think there's anyone really that spectacular he can drop it to, so dropping it back to Shiozaki does make sense. Um, I, I, I wasn't a fan of Noah back in 05. I don't know what the feeling was when Kobashi had it for two years, and he dropped it to Rikio or... In 08, in 08, I mean, I was just starting to get into Noah um, when Misawa dropped the belt to Morishima, and those are the two longer reigns along with this one in uh, Noah history. So I don't know what the feeling was, if it was like kind of the same as this one or not. But uh, all, all things aside, this was still a great, very entertaining match. It got a lot of time. Uh, the, 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 these two guys' offenses really worked well against each other. Even though we had seen this before, we uh, see, I had seen some of these elements before, they were not bad elements at all. They were still very entertaining. Um, Claudio did a lot of great stuff here. He Claudio is over his shit, and so is Hero uh, with this crowd. And, I mean, Sugero really did play up. You know, he, he does better. He usually does wrestle bigger guys than him, so he plays that very well. And, you know, I still really, really liked this. It was a very great match. Still the second best match of the night. Overall, this, this DVD gets a 9.25. Uh, I don't know if it is my show of the year, but it's definitely up there. Definitely top three, you know, top five in there. Um, an amazing show, worth every cent that I picked this up for. And uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys later.